Hello everyone, Colin Canette here for Woodwork Web. Today we're going to talk about veneering. It's a specialized area in woodworking that not a lot of woodworkers have experience at. So today that's what we're going to be talking about. In all the things I've ever done in woodworking, I can honestly say that the most exciting thing that I've ever done is veneering. And when I've talked to other woodworkers, they've expressed the same thought, that veneering was one of the most exciting things that they've ever done in woodworking. I, I don't know why that is, but it's kind of a unique process. And to give you an example, basically what veneering is, is simply laying down uh, a very thin sheet of of wood, the, over gluing it over top of some kind of a substrate so that you end up with something like this. And here's an example of where veneering is a really nice process when you're making uh, doors and you want some kind of a special panel inside, you can actually veneer this inside. And there's different ways of doing veneering. The process I'm going to be talking about today will actually be using a vacuum pump. Now, I'm actually not going to be doing any veneering today. We'll do that on the next video because there's an awful lot to explain about veneering even before you get started. So there's basically two kinds of veneering. You can actually purchase veneer that has a, a backing on it that you can, sometimes you can peel um, at like a uh, plastic off the back of it and lay it down uh, and roll it out. Uh, you can also buy heat activated uh, veneers and they're typically they're smaller sheets. Uh, both of these are, are for smaller areas and with the heat activated you can simply use a, a home iron, uh, lay the, the veneer, veneer on your substrate and and just veneer it with an iron or just iron it on there uh, and it's, the heat from the iron will activate it to the substrate. But today, as I said, we're going to be talking about using a vacuum press. But before we get started, let's talk about veneers for a second. Now, veneers can be a, a variety of widths and sizes and thicknesses. And basically, if you look at the edge of a piece of plywood, it's made up of a variety of veneers all glued together. And that's all a veneer is. But the reason that you want to use a veneer is because you can get some very special woods sometimes that you can't typically buy as a board. So there's two kinds of veneers that you can buy. There's one called rotary and there's one called sliced. And a, a rotary veneer looks like this. It's basically a big log that's put on like a giant lathe and there's a blade that comes down like that and it slices off, it peels off miles, literally miles, it can go on and on and on until the log goes down to nothing and just keeps spinning and spinning and the veneer just comes off and rolls off uh, until the log is down to nothing. And that's what they make plywood out of. The veneers that we like working with when we talk about doing some specialty veneering like we're talking about is called sliced veneers. And the difference is that a sliced veneer actually looks like a board because the difference is they take a log, the same log, only they cut it down here to get a, a, a flat area and then they start slicing it. The knife comes down here and it this comes down and does a slice, slice, a very thin slice every time. And it just keeps slicing all the way through the log, just like that, so that that's where all your veneers come from. And the sliced is by far the most uh, sought after because this is the kind of, you're familiar with plywoods, this is the kind of, of, of veneering that you get with rotary type veneers. And Another type of veneer is like this, where you get a sliced veneer, so you don't see all of those um, uh, uh, cathedrals that you would in a typical um, rotary. So this is sliced veneer. 
Veneers come in all sorts of different lengths and widths and sizes and of course all sorts of different kinds of woods and typically they'll come in woods that you can't even buy for example burl wood uh, you can't buy burls well you can buy burls but you it's very difficult working with burl wood whereas a burl uh, burl veneer you can do a lot cover a lot of area with a with one burl if you can get some slices and these are just some of the veneers that I have um, small ones now these are some that I actually purchased off eBay uh, there's a, a good listing of veneers this is actually a bird's eye maple and this board if you were to buy a board of bird's eye maple like this uh, it would cost you a lot of money, but instead I was able to pick up some veneers for a little bit more than the cost of a board, but I can actually veneer this now. This is bird's eye maple. I can veneer this now on top of, of um, a, a substrate and get you know dozens of square feet more. And as I say, it come, veneer comes in all sorts of lengths and widths. This is, you can't even see the end of this on this. Um, this is like a six foot long, uh, eight inch wide or whatever it is, uh, strips of veneer. And this is what I use for backing. So it comes in all sorts of different sizes, widths, tree species, pretty much anything that you can imagine you can get in a veneer. All of these bundles of veneers like this where you get a group of them together they're called a flitch and when you purchase them you can purchase something called book matched or just random veneers and I like to buy book matched and what that means is which, which book matched veneers are such that when you open them up I'll do that, try and do that here you can actually see when you glue them together, when you put them on a substrate, that they have a there's a, a, a matching that that there is, and, and you can imagine if there was three or four of these together, what kind of a lovely pattern you could get if you were building a, a long cabinet with cabinet doors on it or something. Uh, so that's another thing to look for is book matched veneers. Let's move on for a second to to the materials that you're going to be you could be um, gluing them on or you might even be um, sticking them on or heat pressing them on in either case you need some sort of a substrate I prefer as a substrate something a man-made product usually like a, an MDF material and the reason for that is they're nice and flat they're nice and smooth you don't have to worry about knots and they come in a variety of widths so that it doesn't matter what you're making you can find an MDF product that will that will fit and basically all you do is put your veneered product on top that you want to veneer um, you glue both sides put that down now you also need to glue the bottom of of any material that you're do that you're that you're uh, veneering because you need to make sure that the wood once it gets veneered is not going to uh, not going to bend or not going to arch because of differences in temperature now let's look closer at that here's an example of a veneered piece that I did a few years ago and you'll you can see the the top and the bottom there's veneers on both the top and the bottom and this has uh, an MDF substrate and there you can see the back but if you look at the side of it you'll see that it's very very flat in each direction and the reason it's very flat is because there's veneers on both sides now if any of you have a book like this this is a typical soft cover book happens to be a bandsaw book that I received uh, a few years ago but if you look at the cover you'll notice how it's arched and the reason it's arched is because this is a plastic coating that's put over top of a, of a cardboard cover. And what happens when the moisture can't penetrate, it 
has to have somewhere to expand to. Remember, all woods and, and wood products have to expand and contract because they take on and release moisture. And a book is no difference. In this case, it, it can only expand because it's taken on moisture and it can only expand and, and, and the way it expands is it curves like that. And that's why these covers, they will not lay flat. Now they will lay flat when the uh, humidity gets uh, much lower here in the Pacific Northwest in the winter time uh, the moisture content is quite high and all of these books will arch like this in the summer when our moisture content drops of course it'll go much flatter but the same is true with veneers and that's why you need to veneer the front and you need to veneer the back so that you don't get that warping that can happen now the last thing I want to talk about is glues the glues that you use to glue your veneers on your substrates. Now, I've used in the past, with great success I might add, uh, yellow, um, typical uh, woodworker's glue, carpenter's glue, uh, and it's worked fine. The problem with those glues, you can encounter something called creep. And what that is, if you've ever looked at these um, yellow glues, for example, um, you'll find that they, they don't dry really hard and because of that, depending on the, the moisture content and the heat and cold that your veneer might be in, there's something called creep and what that means is that particularly if you've got book matched veneers, what can happen is they can actually come apart just a little bit so that there's a little bit of a crack in there between the two veneers and that's what's called creep and if you're doing veneering I recommend that you get a proper veneering glue uh, because it dries much harder and it prevents that creep and you don't want if after all the work you have put in veneering you really don't want anything to happen to it so it's always best to use the proper materials when I first got started in veneering I had a lot of questions and not very many people around to answer them because there were so few people that did veneering and to this day there's still uh, not a lot of people that do veneering. So you really need two things when you're veneering. You need a, a, a bag, a, a vacuum press bag, and you need a pump. And We'll talk about the pump in a minute. Let's have a look at the bag. Now you can purchase the bags uh, which is what I recommend by the way or you can do what I did and actually manufacture the bags you can buy the material and all of the special glues to do that the reason I recommend that you purchase the bags is because when you use the glue to put the stuff together it needs to be an industrial strength you need to have an, a vapor um, mask on because the fumes are, are quite deadly for this stuff so you really want to leave that stuff up to somebody who knows what they're doing with that kind of a material and the bags are not all that expensive at the end of the day compared to buying the materials so the bag consists of, of, a, of a vinyl type of plastic bag and inside all there is I'm just removing this we'll talk about this in a second inside the bag. I'll tip that up so you can see. All this is is an MDF board inside here and I've taken it to my table saw and just cut some small grooves in it and the reason it's got grooves in there is so that when the hose is hooked up to here to suck all of the air out inside the bag it has an area to draw from throughout the bag it can draw air from any area and that's all these are is just little veins to help be able to draw the air to this area now this bag or this thing that I just pulled out over top this is all this is is a mesh and it does the same thing as the grooves here it allows the air to move freely over top of the the veneered piece so when you're putting a veneered piece together basically what you do is you you glue your substrate you'll glue your veneer and I like to do both sides at the same time and if the workpiece is too big 
of course you can't do that because you do have a, a, a limited time. Then I like to do the back and do the same thing and I actually like to veneer both sides at the same time. Then that goes into the press or into the bag and I usually leave this in and just slide it back and forth and I'm not going to fuss with it today but that goes in over top of that and then the hose is hooked up and the end of the bag is sealed and they have a really cool um, sealing system for the uh, these bags it's basically a, just a having trouble there, we'll do it that way basically just a, a, a white plastic tube with a sort of a half cap and the way that works, if we can see it at the end here you just roll your bag over top of the end like that and then just clip that on, it's a, it's a little bit tricky to get that on there, just clip that on there and it, just like that, and it seals that bag and then you turn your press on, your vacuum um, pump on and it's sealed all the way around and it basically just sucks all of the air out and puts pressure, it puts even pressure on your veneer piece that's inside there and that's how the veneering works. So here's my little vacuum press and this is actually the motor down here, this area down here and I'm not going to go into all the detail of this because you can look that stuff up later on. Of course this is the switch here and they're not very loud, that's the nice thing about these motors is they're not very loud and they'll cycle on and off as you're using it once you've hooked it up to the bag. Uh, the only other thing that's notable on this is this has some reserve tanks just like a, a compressor that you might have in your shop it has a reserve tank so that it doesn't have to run all the time and that's what these do, these reserve tanks. Um, and this, you, incidentally, you can, I didn't make this up myself, well I did make this up myself, but the plans for these and similar plans um, you can find on uh, Joe Woodworker, uh, Joe Woodworker website. Um, he's got uh, all sorts of uh, good veneering uh, products uh, and plans for how to make these pumps. Um, this one, I actually purchased this motor here, this actual pump here, off someone off eBay and I think I paid $25 for it but that was because they thought it was a compressor they didn't even know it was a, a vacuum pump um, but typically these will go for $100 I think um, this whole package together you're probably looking somewhere in the vicinity of, uh, of a couple hundred dollars to put together a good quality little pump like this uh, and this one I don't know if we can see it here if I flip it over far enough you can actually see in this area right up here there it actually has uh, it shows me I can adjust the how much pressure there is inside and it's got a nice little handle so I can pack it around and it's not too heavy so that I can actually set this up in a different room which is what I do I'll often set up my veneering in a different room uh, and just let it go ahead and uh, veneer so that I have the workshop to do other things. So that's all there is to a, a vacuum press or vacuum pump. So people might ask you, well, why would you bother with veneering when you can buy the wood? And the question is um, not whether you can buy the wood or not. In a lot of cases you cannot buy the wood uh, that you can when you buy uh, veneer strips. Um, but there's also a cost involved. You can imagine if you could buy burls and actually use burl wood uh, you, you just simply couldn't afford it. it would be so expensive to do that unless you're doing little small boxes uh, but if you're doing big pieces of furniture uh, you just can't afford to do that and it also has to do with the conservation and that's what I like about it it's the conservation side of this is that you can actually use a tree uh, particularly a figured tree with uh, bird's eye maple or figured oak or whatever it is um, and you can get a lot more use out of that tree than simply cutting it up into boards. So it really does make a difference in veneering and it doesn't matter whether you 
do like I do, um, do vacuum press veneering, or whether you do iron-on veneering, they both do the same thing. Uh, and one doesn't replace the other, they, they both augment one another. If you're going to do a lot of veneering, um, you'll want to get into vacuum presses. If you're only doing a little bit once in a while, uh, probably uh, a, a heat or a, a peel-on type of uh, veneer will work just fine for you. This concludes our video on veneering, an introduction to veneering. Our next video will actually get out and, and actually turn this machine on and we'll actually do some veneering. Uh, but if you really want to get into doing veneering, into advanced woodworking and, and really have some fun and try some different stuff, I suggest that you have a, a close look at veneering. I think you'll find that uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with a vacuum press as well, not just veneering but bending. Uh, there's all sorts of things that you can do with that as well. And of course, as usual, we ask you to subscribe to this channel if you're new. If you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web. And we ask you to go to Woodwork Web because there will be an article associated with this video uh, that will have, of course, different links that I've talked about in here uh, where you can get different supplies and different information on veneering. So, I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.